Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. We are now in part two of the Persona 5 collab. As you can see, I still got Joker representing for the crew, which I, one thing I forgot to mention on the last video is uh, Joker was also, I believe, a Smash Brothers Ultimate character for DLC. Just thought that was, you know, something that would be a nice little fact to bring up. But let's go ahead and talk about the banner here. So today we're going to start with Crow. Now, looking at his stats, he is a soldier. Uh, HP and MP are decent, 7,700 and 200. Uh, strength and... Actually, strength is a little over 1,500, which is decent. Um, defense and mine, a little over 1,200. With, sorry, defense and intelligence at over 1,200. And mine, just over 9. As far as his attribute resistance, we're looking at 15 as a positive for all the four basic elements. Fire, Ice, Earth, and Thunder. So that's pretty cool. However, just know that he is very weak to light. And as far as his uh, ailments, we're looking at a weakness to both illness and poison, resistant to both blind and curse, and then nil to stun. So he's kind of all over the place with his resistances and his weaknesses. One thing to note as well, he is going to be a no attribute attacker or a neutral attacker. So no elements for this guy. So that's probably the most important thing to notice here. Going over his traits, we will start with kill them, Robin Hood. No attribute attack damage plus 50%, damage cap 10k. When attacking bosses with the lost debuff, no attribute attack damage plus 50%, damage cap 15k more. So yeah, he's, he's going to deal tons of damage if you unlock his full potential. Second trait is called Justice. Boost strength and defense based on number of al other living allies, max of 25%. When unit is incapacitated, living allies recover medium HP. So, that's a little something, a little bit of support there, sort of. Alright, so, we have Treacherous Intent. This is the same spell that they all have, so we don't need to really discuss it. It just gives them the debuff that enables their kit in general. This is for all of the characters in this collab. Don't really need to go too far into it. Uh, we do have, uh, as far as other things, we have HP up max, attack up max, fighting spirit 4, resolve up 4. We have soldier mastery, I think this is the thing that gives you like a bonus against snipers and a defense against snipers. Uh, we have weapon break, which is also something you don't see very often. When attacking with a skill, chance to inflict a physical damage minus 20% debuff to the enemy. So that's a nice little thing that he gets that's kind of rare. We have auto brave, we have life brave, we have life fort, so he's got some... Uh, some decent defensive passives here, so that's not too bad. Uh, we have Auto Protection, we have Fury, and we have Patience uh, of the number two variety. Uh, these are very important, and you'll see why, because there are certain things that if you use them regularly, he'll be lacking, so this kind of makes up for a certain thing. We'll talk about that here soon. We have No Attribute Attack Raise, No Attribute Attack Raise 3, Pose of Glory, L of Glory, Blood Force. Huh, I'm surprised they gave him Blood Force. You'll, you'll see why I didn't realize this was actually a thing for him. Okay, let's keep going. We have Piercing, we have Sword High Boost, we have Machine Mega Boost, Skill Charge 2, and we have Decoy, Indomitable Spirit, Break Boost, Destroyer, Giant Killing 2. It'll be a Massacre. Okay, so this is some unique stuff. So, so far you can see you can kind of do Breaking as well. But uh, Physical Attack Damage plus 30%, Damage Cap 3k, to enemy with a Treacherous Intent debuff. So, you know, they're... Normal D above makes them better. Feel the rush. Units SC, I'm sorry, strength and SAT recovery speed plus 20%. While unit is alive, other allies strength and SAT recovery speed minus 5%. Okay. So basically he makes himself better but at the cost of making his teammates not so not as good. We have it's game over. Physically attacking. Criticals don't occur. But damage plus 40%, damage cap 5,000. So he wants to not crit, which for most people doesn't matter because not, not everybody likes crits. So, you know, but I mean, I'm a big fan of crit personally, but I don't necessarily think that every character needs a crit package, so I'm okay with this. No time for mercy. So HP recovery from active skills minus 50%. No attribute damage cap 3,000. I guess... Now I think about it, I can understand why Blood Force is there because it's not considered an active skill. Okay, so basically if you were to use an active 
spell or active uh, skill to heal, it'll, it'll be basically cut in half. Um, and these are the things you can take off if they bother you so much. But I'm the kind of person that I like to build the character the way they're intended. So that's why I would just leave them all on. Now, there are certain abilities that I do take off here and there for, for my own preference sake. But overall, he's just different. And that probably is going to be scary for a lot of people. Now, something to kind of keep in mind, this is a no attribute attacker. So you're not going to have to worry too much about resistances, which is where, which is basically what his strength is. And if you leave, you know, him as is the way intended, he has potential to do a lot of damage. And if, and if not being able to crit bothers you, there is an arc that exists out there that kind of helps him with that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll, sh I'll just pull it up real quick. Hold up. Here we go. The UR Arc Voss, a cult of God. So the arc trait here is when physically attacking, if no criticals or we'll just say Slayer effects are activated and no attribute weakness is hit because he's, you know, a no attribute attacker, damage plus 40%. And then there's other stuff too, but that's just kind of the, uh, oh, and the no attribute attack damage count 2000. This arc is more or less his best in slot. He's he, naturally, he doesn't want to crit. He's no attribute, so you're not doing any kind of attribute damage. I mean, the only thing you have to do is just avoid slayers in order to unlock the full potential of this arc with that character. I think that this goes hand in hand with Crow. So there are probably other arcs you could use too, but to me, this is his best in slot on first impression. And uh, this is an arc that is usable. It's nothing you have to pull from a gotcha. This is a UR arc that you can get by doing a bunch of side quests and meeting a certain boss. So, you know, that's something I wanted to kind of bring up in case you're wondering, you know, what could be good for a build like that. This is pretty much it. But overall, this is an interesting character, I'll say. I mean, not the kind of character that is my personal taste. However, the fact that he is a no attribute attacker is really my favorite thing about this character. I haven't really pulled a no attribute attack character since Baron. So if I were to pull him, it would be just nice to have a more up-to-date you know, attribute damage dealer. But other than that, I mean, yeah, he seems pretty decent. You know what I mean? I think he's going to be someone that's okay to have if you're lacking in the no attribute department. Now, if you have some of the more recent no attribute attackers, like uh, the, the new shift of, uh, what was it, the guy from the slime collab, Milam or something? I might be wrong. I might be saying the wrong name. Or Rimuru. That's what it is, Rimuru. So if you have, like, Rimuru or you have, uh, what, Ardine, I mean, or even 2B, I mean, I think you're doing okay. I don't think this will be a must for you. But uh, if you're as behind as I am, uh, this might be okay for your account. You know what I mean? So it really just depends on what you're lacking. And But other than that, this isn't necessarily a must pull, but he's interesting. I'll say that much. If you're a big fan of Persona in general, specifically 5, I mean, obviously you want to get him for collector's sake, but... I mean, that's about it. But overall, I think it's a decent unit specifically because there's a no attribute attacker. Now let's talk about the waifu, Violet. So, this is also a soldier. Uh, HP and MP are similar to Crows. A little over 7k, a little over 200. Um, but the stats are all, between the strength, defense, and, and mine are all at least a thousand or greater. So, you know, she's just got decent stats all around. The uh, attribute resistance, we have a plus 30 to light, but minus 20 to dark. So she's definitely kind of different from Crow there. Uh, in terms of the attribute resistance, or yeah, ailment resistance, she's nil to both blind and stun, which is really cool. She's resistant to illness, but she is weak to curse. Now that usually sounds bad, but when you see how she's built, it's not as bad as it sounds, and so we'll go over why. Now, as far as her element, she is a light attribute attacker. So that's just some, that's the most important thing to note here. Let's take a look at these traits. So we are looking at show them Cinderellin. I'm probably saying that wrong. Light damage plus 30%, damage cap 9k, chance to nullify physical damage taken. When attacking bosses with the lost debuff, light attack damage plus 50%, damage cap 20k more. And then we have, okay, so first off, this, you know, nice to just see some damage and damage cap. Uh, then we go to the second trait called Faith. When physically attacked, 
by a boss, chance to activate a power counter. When magically attacked by a boss, chance to activate counter. Counter damage 150% or plus 150%. During counter, physical damage taken minus 50%. When counter activates, chance for the extra attack. So basically, against bosses, she can do. She has a chance to do some countering, whether it's physical or magic. She can still counter. The only thing she's not going to counter is a special. And uh, on top of that, when she does counter, you have a chance to get a pursuit. So it's interesting that we finally get a counter unit. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen a character that cares about counter. I'm not sure if Davin was one of them. That, that has a counter mechanic, but I know there's like an older character that has like a counter mechanic. So I just hope that the, the counter rate is high. I mean, cause I've never really played too much with counter, but I've always assumed it was just like, um, like guard where the chance of it proccing is pretty low, but it can happen. But let's take a look at what else she has to offer. So, just like everybody else, she has treacherous intent. We don't need to discuss that. We know what it is by now. Uh, for her passes, though, we have Fighting Spirit 5, Resolve of 4, Arcane of 4, Crit Up 3, Aim Vitals, Royal Armor. We have Counter. Okay, so now we get the Counter package here. So, this shows you that she is a full-on Counter character because she can pretty much counter anything, potentially. It's just that she gets better um, abilities when it's a boss. But she does come with Counter. So, since we never talk about it, we're going to read each one of these. So in physically attack, chance to activate a powerful counter. We have counter boost, so counter damage plus 35%, so you get a boost to your damage. Counter boost two, and I, which I don't think exists anywhere. This might be our first time seeing this. Counter damage plus 35%, counter damage cap 2k, unless this just came out of an arc, but I can't remember. Counter boost three, good counter damage plus 50%, counter damage cap 3k. Again, we are like all in on the counter. Iron wall counter. So when counter is active, damage taken minus 20%. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So when you're countering and they're constantly still hitting you with whatever they're hitting you with, you're just shrugging some damage. I think that's cool. Uh, we have heal counter. So when counter activates, slightly restore HP. That's kind of nice. Counter charge. So when, S, when, when counter activates, restore one second of SCT. Wow. So this is like the full counter package. I'm not, I think she has everything that exists when it comes to counter plus some. So I find that very, very interesting. It's almost like the guard package, except it's counter instead. She gains SCT, she gets healing, and then she can increase the, uh, you know, I guess damage based on, you know, how what, what her stats are anyway. So we have auto brave, we have auto protection, we have auto haste, we have awaken. And then of course we have some Element boost. So we have light high drive, light mega drive, light attack raise two. We have bless amp. This is a light attack damage plus 30% with a light damage cap of 5k. We have the thumaturgy ring plus. So basically her int and strength can, uh, or her int can add damage um, to her strength. And then you can stack it with the regular thumaturgy ring if you want. She has a lore, which makes sense because you, if you're trying to make sure counter happens, you want the attention on you so to, to up your chances of proccing at more. So that makes sense. We have sword mega boost. We have machine high boost. We have decoy. We have dazzle us. So this is going to be new. So during a 30 plus hit physical attack, or basically a combo, to non-boss enemies with treacherous intent debuff, Change the debuff to a lost debuff. Damage to enemies with lost debuff plus 50%. Okay. So this is specifically against bosses. You could potentially get more damage if you are if you have at least a 30 hit combo or higher. Uh, combos are easy to get when you have a full party. Uh, just to put, if you're doing like a single run, I wouldn't... This would, this would, doesn't really do much for you. But yeah, I mean, if you got a full party, getting a 30 hit combo is actually pretty easy. Especially if you have a mage. So I think that you'll be fine here. A perfect 10. Counter damage with 50% during counter. Enemy defense minus 25% and deal damage. So, so you're able to basically hit them harder. Is what that is basically saying with your counter. Our grand finale. So when using a skill, chance to nullify physical attack damage taken. Huh. Well, that's pretty cool. That's actually really cool. So basically, you know, when you're activating your skills, they're going to be hitting you at the same time. 
you can shrug some of the damage. That's basically what this is saying. So very interesting. So overall, I think this is a very interesting uh, character. I actually like how she looks. I like her sprite. I like the, the image here that they have for you, her pose and all that. I think it's really, really nice. This is the character that I want. This is the waifu, and I like to collect some, some waifu, so why not? Uh, I haven't pulled her yet, unfortunately, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But overall, I think this is a very interesting unit. Now, some people might be upset about this package because it's counter. It doesn't really get used in this game. If you were to eliminate the counter she has, she could still do damage in general. I mean, all of these characters can still do damage that's, you know, worth something. They still can... You know, they're lateral to, to some of the other characters that we have in this game as well as recently released. So it's not like they're outclassed already. They can, they are still relevant is, is basically what I'm saying. It's just that their niches just make them is where you unlock their full potential. And her counter package might be a lot better than people think. I think this is going to be a very underestimated character. And honestly, I really hope I get her. But unfortunately, I've done about seven multis and got nothing. So... I am not. My hopes are not high. I'm just hoping that when we when I get a ten a ten pull ticket, that I, hopefully that will yield me her and possibly the art. We'll see. But yeah, overall, I actually like this character more because she's just different, and I'm just kind of curious to see how she plays. So yeah, I, I I actually like her a lot, believe it or not. And this is an art called Kich Kichi Joji. So. This is the LR for this particular banner. It's SAT recovery speed plus 10%. Continue with strength plus 25% buff. When taking an attribute weakness attack, chance to nullify damage taken. When physically attacking an enemy in break, give the enemy a strength, defense, int, and mind minus 20% debuff once per wave. So that seems okay. You're getting some stat bumps. You're getting some boss um, stuff. It's, it's not not boss, but break stuff, but it's basically boss stuff. So it's okay. But what can we learn here? Well, we have encouragement. So for 2SC, we have battle end, recovers MP plus 5%. Now, I've heard people have a variety of opinions about this. Some very positive, some very negative. Personally, I'm on the positive side of this. So here's why I think this, is, this particular skill is actually good. You have these things called mages in this game. You know, Eliza... Uh, Maja, you know, who, you know, you want to help clear waves for you. For a very minimal 2SC, you can basically recharge their MP every turn. Oh, by the way, there's also this character named Roy that's pretty popular, who, you know, you'd like to make sure he has some MP. Why not make sure that he's also getting topped up a little bit at the end of a wave? I mean, it's just convenient, so you can continue to spam your... S3. So yes, I think I actually like encouragement a lot. I think this is a really good skill, especially how cheap this is. It's actually really good to me. Moving on, we have heal counter. So this is a, a skill that we just saw on Violet. So when counter activates, slightly restore HP. Oh no, no, this is different. Slightly restore HP. I think the other one just said, uh, or did it say the same thing? Maybe it did. Yeah. So yeah, slightly restore HP when counter activates. So if you want to give this to another character, that you're gonna do a counter build with. There you have it. You get MP up four. We get light shield. We get keen eye. Now this right here is probably the most impressive thing out of this entire banner, and probably the most impressive thing we can learn in a long time. So keen eye for 11 SC, which is a lot. However, for 60 MP, restore medium HP and SCT 10 seconds for all allies. All right. So I've already seen a lot of people compare this to um, Glass Record. Now, when Glass Record first came out, I wasn't really, I didn't really have a strong opinion about it one way or the other. But now that I have a better understanding of the game, I see why this spell is very important. This is a way to kind of make sure that your characters are topped off and able to keep doing their skills. So you throw this on your healer, or you throw this on your tank that you're using as a healer, like Reese, Roland, whatever and you just basically make sure your entire team is topped off you know it's like if you have two dps's and you're trying to maintain both this is a way to do it especially if you don't have like you know honey elixir or any character that has it or all the other similar things or if you still have glass record at all this is this is it right here for you so this is a very very important skill to have if you want to make sure that you can keep the offense going with your skills uh so yeah so this is a fantastic thing to have 
I want this arc. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to pull it because anyone that knows me well enough knows that uh, I never get good arcs in collabs. So, uh, yeah, probably not going to happen unless I pity it. And I don't know if I'm willing to go that far. But it is very, very good. And I wouldn't blame anyone for pitting this arc just for that skill. That's how important this is. All right, moving along. We have no attribute attack raise too. So for 15 SC, no attribute attack damage plus 30%. It's nice. Not necessary, but nice. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the Arc Ether reward. This is a Kitajoji card holder. This accessory has three, gives you 300 HP, plus 40 MP, plus 52 on defense and mine. So you get some stats. Trait, battle end, restore HP and MP plus 10%. Uh, no resistances. So, like I said about that um, 2 SC ability that you can get, this is something you can have as an accessory. So at the end of battle, you're refreshing your MP and a little bit of HP as well. Again, this is good for any kind of mage or any kind of alchemist if you're doing multi-wave clears. I think this is nice. I actually like it. I fully endorse it. I think this is a good thing to have. However, I wouldn't necessarily rush to use your uh, Ethereum on it, unless you're like me and have like 80 of them. But for anyone else who might not have a large collection of Ethereum, I probably wouldn't recommend you throwing it on this. I think you should just let this get to 100% naturally and uh, not rush into it. But I, I do like the accessory though. I do like this reward, so it gets my seal of approval. So overall, this is a great arc. I actually would say that this is probably the best LR we've seen in a long time. Specifically because of Kenai. It's a strong, strong ability. But Encouragement as well is pretty good too. So I think that because of those two alone, this makes us great. I think the Ether Reward is pretty decent. I think the Arc Trade is okay. I, I, it's not, nothing that's super crazy, but it's okay. But yeah, I think uh, Kenai and Encouragement are, are very, very important. Specifically Kenai. Very, very important, makes this a very, very valuable LR. If you're fortunate enough to get it, good for you. I hope you get it. All right, let's talk about some other stuff. Of course, we're gonna talk about the credential items, which by the way, I went ahead and did the uh, first lap of the step up, hoping to get something not so fortunate yet. We'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, going with Crow's weapons, we'll go with the Mobius. This is a machine with no attribute. Strength 253, int 107, which is actually pretty good. No attribute physical attack damage plus 15%. No attribute physical damage cap 1500, break plus 50%. I actually like this a lot. Uh, now, the physical damage and the damage cap is pretty good. The stats are also pretty good, but the break plus 50% kind of tops it off. This is really just a good package overall. I like it a lot. The second thing that you can get for Crow is the Crow's Mask. So this is an accessory, gives you plus 500 HP, plus 73 strength, and plus 36 intelligence. When close to death, very greatly restore HP, strength, defense, and mind, plus 50%. Boost movement speed once per wave, continuous haste. And then you get a plus 10 resistance to dark and then a stun uh, resistance. So overall, I think this is decent. I think it's pretty good. I'm not really a huge fan of the when close to death abilities. Uh, so, I mean, that doesn't really do much for me. I think the stats are okay. And a continuous haste is pretty good. But, yeah, the, the when close to death stuff. I mean, yeah, you get fairly great at restore HP and all that, which is fine. But, mm, I don't know. It doesn't accept me as much as it should, I guess. So, easily for me, if I'm going to pick one or the other, I think the Mobius is the, uh, the one to pick straight up. But let's talk about our lady, Miss Violet, the waifu of the evening. This light attribute sword gives you two, plus 212 strength, plus 146 intelligence, defense plus 31, mind plus 21. Light attack damage cap 1500, light attack damage plus 10%. During counter, damage from enemies minus 20%. Overall, I think this is decent. It kind of fits what she's supposed to do. So the fact that it gives you some, you know, defense when you're countering is not so bad. So I think it's okay. It doesn't really blow me away, but I think it's okay. And then we have Violet's Mask, because why not? Uh, HP plus 200 this is an accessory. Strength and Intelligence plus 50. Defense and Mind plus 30. Trait says Battle Start. Give unit in 
I'll revive buff. Draw more enemy attention, but because less likely to faint. Wait, oh, but become less likely to faint. Sorry, I can't read apparently. Counter damage plus 20%. Gives you a plus 10 resistance to light and an and blind resistance for your elements. So, I actually like this a lot. You know, I like Battle Start more than I like, you know, close to death abilities. But getting an auto revive buff at the start is pretty good. And you're, you're getting an allure stack, which is also pretty good, especially for what she's trying to do. Uh, becoming less likely to fight, fate is also really, really good. And then, of course, the counter damage goes up. I mean, this is actually a very, very strong item. So for me, it's easy that I would pick the mask over the rapier any day for the thing to have. So, yeah, some interesting equipments. And for me, it's, the choices are easy, assuming, you know, you get these items. So overall, how do I feel about the collab in general so far? So the thing about this is uh, you start off with a few levels that you have to do. You clear these levels, you get some items that can either help speed up your uh, tours or you can uh, unlock different cubes. And then you, speaking of tours, you get these heists that you can do. So right now I'm about to go to it. I got some heists that I can automatically clear here. So we're going to go ahead and check my results. And so basically this, you basically have tours is, is kind of the, the extra gimmick here. And then this, probably fits the aesthetic of the game itself. So for some people are thinking, you know, why would we do this? There's probably a reason, like the artwork is probably like a level, probably like the final dungeon or something. Now, when you're doing this, I'm gonna just go ahead and auto do this. Uh, you get special levels that spawn that can give you more rare stuff. So we have a bonus quest that I can do. So we'll go ahead and do the bonus quest while I'm talking about how I feel about the collab overall. All right, so. <clears throat> In terms of this collab, my expectations were, one, I know this is a video game collab. So the things that I expect are music from the games to be almost everywhere, um, backgrounds of the game itself to be in battle, and of course, interesting characters. And I think we got all of that. I mean, there, there's definitely music that I assume comes from the game. Again, I did not actually play Persona 5, but I can assume that this is all related to, uh, you know, the actual game itself. So that's pretty cool. As far as the characters in general, well, sorry, let's talk about the background. So as you can see, the backgrounds here are different and uh, that's a good thing. It's nice to be able to look at something different. And it's nice to hear something different because when you're playing the same game, you know, for a long time, you kind of get used to the same visual, the same sounds and everything. So this is kind of a good break from what you're normally having to hear and see. So that's kind of what makes a collab, specifically the video game one, so special. Because even with the anime ones, we don't really get anything too special with the anime. No real music and no real uh, special background. So this is part of what makes the video game collabs a step better than the anime ones in general. So what I'm saying here is that Ada's did what I expected them to do. Now, the only thing I haven't really touched on are the characters themselves. How do I feel about them? Overall, I like them. Now, they're not necessarily like breaking the game or anything. These aren't like the most broken characters in the world. And you know what? They don't have to be. My expectation is they just need to be unique and interesting and still be good, usable for, you know, what's going on in the game. You know what I mean? So they do so should have a certain level of damage cap. They just have, you know, decent stats for where other characters are. And I think that they do that. I think they meet, you know, the basic qualifications of what stats should be in a game. And they're all unique to, you know, their different strengths or weaknesses. So Violet is the counter character. Uh, you have uh, <clears throat> Crow, which is kind of like a breaker, but more of a no attribute attacker in general. You have uh, the kitty cat who can heal um, while uh, being kind of a crit guy, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, you have um, <clears throat> Joker, which is the one I got, who is basically a dark attacker who tries to do a little bit of everything. Kind of like a jack of all trades, but master of none. Because the thing about... Uh, Joker is that uh, he has a lot of things in his kit, but he doesn't necessarily specialize in anything. He can break, he can give status elements, but ultimately I mainly just use him just for DPS. I mean, that's just, you know, what he's there for. 
So, but either way, I think that they're all different. They're all unique. And that's honestly what I would consider a successful group of characters in a collab. We have a lot of variety, which I love. Like I said in the last video, the biggest criticism that I have for Attack on Titan's collab is that everybody felt the same. There was nothing super special. I mean, Mikasa was probably the only thing that was like super interesting because yeah, like she was really like, big on crit and stuff like that. But I mean, outside of that, I mean, there wasn't anything too special about those characters. I mean, they all use the same weapons. They all were, you know, pre-dual will, pre all using swords. I mean, it was just, it felt like a copy and paste of everything. Whereas here, everybody feels different. Some of them are using different weapons. They all have definitely different ways to play them. You know what I mean? So yeah, overall, I actually like what they did with the character. I think they did a really good job with all four of them. You know, and of course, the fact that they gave us a free character is great. Now, obviously, the free character only came for the first two, which was uh, Joker and the kitty cat, because I forgot the cat. Oh, Morgana. There you go. Or, yeah. So you can only get one of those two, but it's better than nothing. Because right now, I've used, you know, some free crystals, and I pulled absolutely nothing. So the fact that I at least get a free character means something, because... Despite how many tens of thousands of crystals you spend, you can still end up getting nothing unless you're willing to pity. And so the fact that they at least gave us something, even if you have bad luck like I do, I feel good about that. At least I got something out of it if I end up getting nothing else. So so overall, I think this is a very successful collab. Now, as far as the levels, I mean, they might not seem super interesting as far as like, you know, what you have to do, but I think it's okay. I don't think we need to do anything super crazy. You know, like I said, we have heists, which are tours. And you just do repeat some levels. It's fine. So yeah, overall, I think this is a 5 out of 5. This is a, a call-out that I really enjoy. So it gets 100% my step of approval. I have really no criticisms personally about this call-out. I think it's just exactly what it needed to be. So, you know. So yeah, I'm actually really pleased with what they did here. And again, this this is the expectations that I have with video game call-outs. I expect them to be like this. And they did exactly what I assumed they would. So... Good job, Adis. Uh, keep up the good work. And I know that next time we have a collab, it'll be an anime one. So um, this will be a matter of uh, which one to decide to do. I know what I'd like to see, but I'm not going to say anything because clearly I'm going to be wrong. So I'm going to keep it to myself. And if I ever get the ones that I actually like, I'll let you guys know. But until next time, <clears throat> be kind and grind, man. Later.